If you're yeah. if somebody completes you, that's a problem because yeah. the minute the minute they don't want to be bothered anymore. Now, like it's, if you never and so the, the rule I say it is is never let never let anybody define you because it won't be long till you ain't shit. And the minute they that they define you in a way that no they no longer like you. All of a sudden now now you're at the at the behest of whatever their mood is in the first place because you're you're when you're complete you're not looking to this person for this validation yo what's up square pin brigade on this episode we have comedian dean david he's here to discuss appreciating the good things getting over a breakup and how do you fix your broken habits and how to re re acclimate your habits and and make things better for yourself so you can get over those fears um uh, don't forget to follow us on Patreon. Really important. Patreon is a man school 202 slash uh, uh, patreon.com slash man school 202. Uh, follow us there and you can get consultation with, with Harry from what's the email, Harry? Uh, advice from Harry at gmail.com. Um, and you can get me from uh, Dante Nero.com. Click on consults. Um, let's get into it. I'm not an alpha male, I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolution? Being podcasted, and I am ex- excited. Uh, now, I may, uh, I may have said that uh, five or six hundred times before this, um, but this time I mean it. Uh, first and foremost, my uh, partner in crime. What's up? What's up, Harry? How you feeling, bro? I'm feeling fantastic, Dante, man. You know, doing good, living life, and uh, but still trying to keep these alligators down. You know, it's, it's hard. Difficult. It's difficult. Pimp, pimping is not easy. Um, we we got a special guest in the building, kind of a kind of a young dude who I really like and I really dig him, and I like him uh, uh, a lot. And you yeah. don't like nobody. Uh, yeah, I'm saying like a him. lot. I mean, I I, I I I act like I like him, but a lot of motherfuckers I don't I don't like. Um, and. Uh, Really good dude, funny dude. Um, give it up for Dean David, y'all. Give it up for Dean David. Hello, I'm Dean <laughs> David. <laughs> it's it's uh it's interesting because uh so it's funny as um not that long ago. I don't know, Dean. You didn't know that I was doing the whole relationship thing before until we were at V Spot, right? Or did you know that? No, I mean I knew like that you did podcasts about relationships and stuff and okay i actually did know and okay. when i asked you about it it was because i knew and i needed i was hoping yeah, you'd you, have you were going through some hmm. some funky times yeah and uh how's that going well explain what if you want to explain what happened and then how we we really started kicking it well well we started kicking it because i was very sad yeah and doing comedy stuff and you are a relationship person and i thought maybe uh you could help me i thought right. i don't know I was, I was looking for help you know yeah, yeah. you're sad though dean what happened what was going because on? i dated i was i dated somebody i i i, I dated somebody and they dumped me is long is a short version of the story but it's more than that I mean, in the grand scheme of it all. And so I've been, yeah, I guess that's the best way to answer that question. I got dumped. That's what happened to me, guys. Yeah, but it dumped. was, it was a little, it, I mean, that's the short, that's the, that's the end result. But what had happened was uh, Dean was dating some, if I remember correctly, you were dating somebody and wasn't really feeling her at the time and then kind of stopped dealing with her and then realized that you kind of liked her more then you thought you liked her initially and then you tried to go back and then she wasn't interested. It kind of not really. What happened was I had a girlfriend and okay. I was dating this girl. And she was not a comedian or it doesn't matter. But she, I, she was a, a girl that I was dating. And um, while I was dating her, you know, she moved away to Los Angeles for a while. We were doing long distance. That was kind of complicated. And I made a couple of friends that were girls, you know, because I guess it was, uh, I guess it's easier to make friends with girls when you're, when you have a girlfriend, you know, because like you're not even interested, mm-hmm. but 
this girl was interested in me. And then long story short, my girlfriend and I broke up and I didn't really see us being anything other than friends at the time. And, uh, but then I changed and then I did like her and then we became a thing. And then she left me and, uh, I'm pretty now, But out. you dated her for a while. Yeah. A, and, and what was, what was the thing? How, what was the feel of the relationship? Like, well, I guess she wasn't as eager to be in the relationship when she finally got you. Um, well, I did something without realizing it. I, you know, I became, I just started like, you know, I noticed something about myself. Dude. I was dating her and I had like this friend group and I had her in my life. Like she was somebody I was dating who it was like, she was my friend. Like before we were dating, she was my friend. So there was like this really good feeling about that. Like I was, I was like, wow. I'm like, I really like love this person who I'm like friends with too. It's just such a good feeling. I started noticing about myself. Like I was starting to draw more. Like I used to draw when I was a kid and like, like basically having her just gave me this like feeling like, but it's not good because that what that means is like, I was searching for that feeling in outside of myself. Exactly. That's the problem. And that's, that's something that we had talked about in the first place is because you have to be, you have to be a complete human being first. Yeah. If you're, yeah. if somebody completes you, that's a problem because the yeah. minute, the minute, they don't want to be bothered anymore now like it's if you never and so the, the rule i say it is is never let never let anybody define you because it won't be long till you ain't shit and the minute they that they define you in a way that no they no longer like you all of a sudden now now you're at the at the behest of whatever their mood is in the first place because you're you're when you're complete you're not looking to this person for this validation. And yeah. that was the problem. And I, we yeah. talked about that, but at the time you were so, so again, there's another rule, which is never let, never let emotions. You can never let emotions have a seat at the table when you're making, yeah. the, the, when you're making these decisions, because yeah. at the time I remember Dean was so distressed and he was trying to yeah. figure it out. And the only thing he could say was, man, but I really like her. And we were such good friends and da, 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 da. And, and I kept saying to him, so what? Like you yeah. have to look at what you have to look at what's happening, not what you want to happen. And this is what's interesting is when we recap the story now, right? Yeah. What's interesting is this. Um, when you have somebody and they're interested in you, but you're not interested in them, right? There's a certain level of attraction that's built because of the fact that you are, you are, un, you're, you're unaccessible, that you're, that you're out of the way. <laughs> and the problem is that when you become in reach, when you, when you get to the point where you're in reach, then all of a sudden it's not so much about who you are. It's about the fact that you were you were unaccessible in the first place. So, it, so we talk about the accountability of of women. I mean, women don't even hold each other accountable, right? So, if you if you was, you know, if if you're a dude and you're in a relationship, and Harry will tell you in a minute if he asked me. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. What do you think? I'm gonna tell him, yo, this is this is missing, that's missing. Yeah, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And he yeah. knows that it's not out of it's not out of pain, it's out anger. of love yeah. for him. Yeah. That yeah, and I'm not saying he you don't have to fix it or you don't have, but if you're asking me the honest as a friend, I, I have to yeah. be honest. So now if I'm honest and now you're making excuses and stuff, I can understand that it's 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 uncomfortable for you because, I mean, I also have the empathy of understanding that it's a painful thing to be in a situation where you're in love with somebody. and you. But but what I was trying to get you to see even then is your perception of who she was it's wasn't related. realistic. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. And I started it wasn't, to say again. I started to, you know, make very big realizations. I mean, I'm very different than I was. Yeah, know? yeah, I could tell. Yeah. Like, basically, dude, I mean, it's like, oh, uh, by the way, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know uh, if, who, if she will ever or whoever. Who, I have no, I don't, I, I don't think she's a bad 
person out like anybody's a bad person. Yeah, and I don't care if you um, do. That's the. Yeah, that's I'm the just other saying thing. like I, I, I don't. Want, I'm, I'm not trying to like. I don't want to be like. I'm not even saying like I'm a victim of this. I'm just kind of like saying what happened with my story. Like, oh, but this, but the reality is that that's everybody. That's everybody. Yeah. If you were sitting there going, "It's her fault" or whatever, even if it was, even if. Or it, it, even if she did horrible things, the point is, even and this is this is what I keep saying to people, e- even if somebody's doing horrible things, they're doing you a favor because you don't want to be 10 years down the road and then find out who this person is. And then you're, you're you've wasted time with somebody who has been living a lie in the first place. So the like, if you're going to cheat on me, cheat on me. If you're going to leave, leave, because I don't I don't I don't care. Like, I don't care enough about somebody who doesn't give a fuck about me that I want you in my space. And I don't care how good it feels because the whole thing, it's a lie. It, yeah. Well, I mean, also, I mean, I think I, I just changed during the relationship. Like, because when she liked me, I wasn't like, I would just like do my life. And uh, which is you know, what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But then, but then exactly. Actually, the problem was, you know, then all of a sudden I, I was becoming. That's, like, but here's the th- here's you got to understand why words words are important. You got to be you got to understand words are important. That's not a problem. It's not a problem that you were in a relationship and couldn't date her because you were in a relationship. Because how often is that a situation with a with a woman who puts a guy in a friend zone and just goes, "Yo, this is what I got." Now, it's your fault if you stay in the friend zone. It's not her fault if she puts you in the friend zone. She's only respond. She's only responding in an honest way to how she feels about you. She don't give that much of a fuck about you. So to put you in, a, if you fucking want a chick and she's putting you in the well, friend zone, she don't like you. There's a lot of things with it, though. I mean, uh, one of the things is, as Dean was talking about his, you know, he's a young guy and he just started in the comedy business, which still is relatively young. Everything is changing, right? So part of it is that that changes the confines of who he is and and the level of the relationship, which there's nothing wrong with that. But you don't sometimes you think. Well, what it's do you your mean? Fault. What do you mean by that? Meaning, like, listen, he's out there hustling. Dean is one of the the biggest hustlers I've seen out there. I see him every night. Every night I walk out, I'm only out a couple times a week at my age. You know what I mean? I see him every night that I'm out. He's always doing something. So when you're committed to that, that can sometimes change the nature of the relationship to a degree. You're still growing. You know, you're still growing and changing who you are, and that can affect things in uh, from yeah. both ends, whether it's for his perspective of her or her perspective of him within the relationship. So that's also part of it. And that's okay if those changes happen and it affects the relationship because, you know, sometimes, but sometimes you feel guilty as a person, like, uh, because you, I don't know, as a man, I feel sometimes guilty, like how the, my partner feels, how my girl feels. Right. But it's not always incumbent upon you. Like there's outside factors. When, look, when her and I, like, what I have been trying to do, like, in my interpretation of whatever I've been going through, it's like we were together and I really liked it, but there were things about me that were, like, not whole, you know? Like, I looked to her to fill those holes. But really, they were so in front of me the whole time. Like, all this time I've been trying to do something, and it was right in front of me. Like, I used to even, like, have this whole preachy thing about how I used to want to decorate my room, but I didn't know what to put up in my room. It's the same mentality. I used to think that, like, if you got a tattoo, that it had to be the perfect tattoo. Like, there's just one tattoo. It's going to be the right tattoo in the right place. How do you know if you get a tattoo? It's the right tattoo. It's like, I used to think these things. So you find yourself just, thinking we, we, about it. We call that and... manic. <laughs> yeah, but no, but, it's, yeah, but the mentality of it is like, it's the same with a girl. It's because you're thinking it's the, it's the perfect one, the right one. And so if you lose somebody, that's the perfect one. That's the right one. How could you ever be okay? Because you lost the right one. That's the, that's the only one. That is the mentality I used to have. And all of that was wrong. And it was all in the same way, like in my life and every, like all those things, that mentality was in my life in every way. Mm. And I was, and I was trying to communicate that to myself in some way or the other. Lately, I have been doing things to open myself up to the world. Like I did get a tattoo and I didn't worry that like it'd be the right one or the perfect one. I just did it. And then I dyed my hair because I wanted to, and I didn't worry with the, and I started decorating my room and just putting things in places and not worrying if that was going to be the right thing, just kind of having an idea. And, they, and like, I remember when she would come over to my house, like she would notice things about my life. Like, you know, my room was kind of musty because I didn't take care of it properly and I didn't realize. And so I, try, I started realizing more about like 
myself. Like every little thing, dude. Her and I used to go to like New York Comedy Club, and I used to sit there and be so quiet and tense, and I couldn't like talk or I was weird. And like it's because I had this wanting energy when I would go to the club because I would be so desperate. It's like I want to go on stage, so I'm hanging out with her, and I'm wanting to go. It's like so bad. Then when her and I broke up, I went to New York and I was like so sad and I didn't want to go up. Like that's not what the energy was. I didn't want to go up. I was just like needing to like feel like around people. And then yeah. because I, and because I wanted to be around people, and I didn't necessarily care if I got on stage. They put me on because they enjoyed my company more because I wasn't this pensive, quiet guy in the corner. I was putting myself out there because I felt more like I needed to. Like, guys, like I am so sad. And I was also so sad. That like it hurt so bad that it was uh, I was more willing to take in the pain of like it's like I wasn't afraid of somebody not liking me because they were not this person that was on my mind. Like in right. my mind, in my mind, the only person I cared about was her. So anybody else, like even when I go and to she didn't house, and she didn't care enough to even, you know, to stick a relationship out. And so it's it's an I interesting. Mean, yeah, it, I'm it, not. You know, I, you you try not to get. Like I, I guess what I'm not saying I'm I, I don't want to say you get, you know you you want to get down in the dirt, but you kind of gotta you gotta speak the language of on the level of the person that you're with. So if they're going, yeah, I don't really give a fuck about you. Then it's your your response. If not your response, your thoughts should be like, I right, fuck you then. Not in a sense, not maliciously, but in a sense of like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm really, They're yeah, mistake. like, it's your mistake. It's just, then. I'm dope, and 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 I get it if you don't get it. I get it if you, you look. I don't like country music, but I'm what if you're mad not? At you. I'm not but mad what? at you because you like it or you don't like it. I don't really give a fuck. But if you try to tell me it's dope, I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. What if what, Dean? But what if you're not being dope? Because I can say I don't think I was being dope to her. And that's, and that's I think that's why funny. that was the that's exactly what I'm sometimes saying. Sometimes I just think sometimes I think that to myself. Like sometimes I have seen her in person and I think, like, what if I just tried just being like really like just a nice guy? Like what if I just didn't have any problems? Like what if I could just do that? It's kind of hard. It's like pretty much I don't know. You you can, but what you what you don't understand is this 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 loop of thinking is habitual. It's 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 the habit. So it's yeah. just like it's just like um you know when Ugh. you when we spend this time contemplating it's got to be the right tattoo it's got to be the reason why we do that is because it's an it's it gives you a feeling of being active in the control of your life without actually doing anything that controls your life. So what I mean is, you know, if you want to learn how to play basketball, you got to get on the court and play basketball. You can you can buy the best sneakers. You can get a headband. You can buy Jordan shirts. You could study tapes. But the, it, this is a physical act where you have to get on the court and attempt to put a basket a, a ball in the basket and there's no substance everything other than that i used to talk about this all the time and i stopped talking about there is no such thing as trying there's only doing trying is a preparation to do but it still is not do if you got a baby and the baby's baby's a toddler but it doesn't walk yet when it's crawling it ain't walking when it's sliding across the floor, it ain't walking. When it's holding on to the to the to the bed or to the wall, and it's that's not walking. Walking doesn't happen until the baby lets go the wall and takes that step. And even if it's a half a step and then they fall, that is walking. Anything less than taking that step or making an attempt is not, and it's not making the attempt; it's doing. So I think what yeah. happens is a lot of times you don't want to make mistakes. You want everything to be. It's an excuse to feel where you feel like you're actively uh, in your relationship, in, in, in your even your relationship with comedy. It, it's it's a way of saying I'm in comedy without risking failure. 
yeah, I started noticing like that, like I would make, I would do these little things all of a sudden. I'd post a reel or I'd take a job doing something, you know, like a man on the street. And I'd make, I'd go, I went to Target or whatever, I to Staples, and I print out little flyers for my show. And like, instead of like being in, because here's the thing, dude, it's the same thing. It's like, you think you want something. Okay. So if you want something, you're actually saying you don't have something because wanting means you don't have, right? Wanting is a lack of having. So instead of wanting all of these things, I started being all of these things. I started doing all of these things. And that was in my head, like steps towards being a more fuller person. It's like, I won't, or I won't wait around and worry for this, that, and the other to validate me so that I can go do something. Even comics do this. Like maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing it with like one particular girl sometime for sure. People do it all the time. A lot of comics, though, they do it for like places. Like they go like the cellar even or like the stand or whatever fucking place. They think like they all go to these places because they think that there is something for them there that they can get so that they can be something. But a lot of times they don't want they don't want they don't really want what's there because to, well, they don't to, know that. to get what you want, there comes sacrifice for that. There comes there comes a risk of losing. There's a risk of getting in and then getting kicked out. There's a risk of getting past and then not getting work. So you, you got to be ready for all of it. If you're not ready for it, like, but here's the thing people will, will drive themselves crazy about getting something when they don't what they, they want the thing, but they don't want that. Every, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody don't want to die first. You can't, uh -huh. you can't go to heaven without dying. So sure. are you ready to really you really want to go to heaven? Uh, well, well to give me a it, minute. To put that in more like like a practical context where you're talking about Dante. Sometimes when we're going through stuff with relationship stuff, we downplay all the things that are going well. And even in even in career, we downplay because we're in such a hustle to get to a bigger goal. And I, I, I explained this to Dean because I ran into Dean when he was having a tough time on the street. Uh, we we're just in comedy. Tough uh, time is putting it lightly, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was trying. I mean, you were having a, no, a rough. Time. I know. I'm. I don't care, dude. I'll say. It. I okay. was. I was like bawling on the street corner, dude. Just yeah. devastated. So so on. Just not well. I was. It not wasn't well. well, and I had to grab him and put him aside, and I sat there and I talked. I think to we him. we spoke for like I think two hours. About yeah, it was about and two was, hours. And I and I still had the same feeling of horribleness, like for most of that. Well, it was hard, man. You were going through a lot, and it was hard to. I was trying to tell you all the things, but you weren't ready to hear it at the moment. And sometimes no. that happens. It takes a while to heal before you can hear it. And so I was having that conversation with Dean and trying to explain to him like, and you know, this isn't the be all and end all, but comedy career wise, he's doing great. Like he really is out there, especially at the, how long you been doing it, Dean? What? The... Comedy. Oh, like not eight, nine years now? Eight, nine years, right? And you're yeah, really yeah. like, Everything is coming together as far as quality. And if it's not exactly everything you want, but I'm going, you have this, this, and this. You're doing this, this, and this week. It actually is everything. I know that sounds like lazy, but that's why I think it's going well. It's like, dude, because I realized here's something I, this is the ultimate philosophy that's been keeping me together because I truly believe it and it's doing me justice. It's like, if this is the way the world works, right? Let's say the world works in that, like, you cannot want anything from anybody and that you must find all fulfillment within yourself. All of it. Here's how I see this, dude. I don't need to go up at some great show to have a good set. I am the great show. I will bring myself everywhere. And every place I go, I will make people feel that way. That's my goal. So I don't need the outside to do that for me. I can bring it to them, right? So I don't ever... So I'm, that's why it's like, I'm content. Like If I do mics, if I just do mics like literally all day, I would be totally fulfilled to have. because i just like doing it and people will yeah. book me anyway because they're gonna want me around because that's just i'm being fun and it, it like enjoy that and then i'll yeah. and i'll consistently make people happy so here's the thing i am like really just considering like i started thinking to myself like you know what is my life you know what do i do with my day and if this is what i do this is what my life will be so I started asking myself, well, what do I want my life to be? But, you know, I don't really have all those answers, which is fine. But that's the point, dude. If I did, I would go do those things. 
I'm in a process of learning what I'm going to do with the world and myself, but I'm also learning what I'm, what I am, and who I am. And I'm enjoying that process of learning it and I'm content with what I have and I'm managing it for how so, I like it. The only thing I'd like more would be to, you know, I guess, you know, not be, you know, I guess always sad about something, whatever, you know? Well, I mean, I think that'll change. I think what you're learning time. is, I think what you're learning is that it's not what what the situation is, is what the situation is. But how you perceive the situation, how you frame it is something totally different. It's like um, like I I, um, you know, I worked at the phone company 28 years and I know guys who have they don't do anything that they love. You know, the only thing they do that they love is drink a beer, get drunk, and maybe watch a game. And they're even in the in the and I'm not knocking that, but you watching dudes who have already you're 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 identifying with guys who have already found their dream. They followed their dream. They're already great. So you're wasting time and energy on not not being the best version of yourself. So, but if nothing else, I get to get on stage and do something that I love and get paid for it. Like, yeah. that's pretty dope. I get it if I'm not I'm not quite a millionaire or this or whatever, but the point is, and there's people that I think that I'm better than, that I, I but this is, but I think when you start deciding that we, you know, I, I've always said this, that the, the scariest thing in the world that I've ever heard was that you can you can do and be anything you want to be. You just got to be willing to make the sacrifice to get there. So you can have what you want, but there's a there's an equal, a equal and opposite sacrifice. And the question is, are you willing to do all that needs to be done to get you to that thing that you want? And this is this has nothing to do with anybody else, because somebody else's pace, their pace what they have to offer is a hundred percent different. So the question is, you know, if, if, you know, look, if I go, if I'm doing comedy and I want blockbusters movies, right. I'm a big dude. If I was, if I look like the rock, like if I had that kind of discipline, which is, those are my parts. Right. But if I was 50 years old, and rip to the bone, I would be now. Maybe I don't get everything that he gets. Maybe that he's. But the point is, I could be Jason Momoa. You know what I mean? Like the, it's the, the you 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 start to understand because you have control over your life that you don't get to blame anybody anymore. What you don't have yeah. is your fault. You you can't come. It's the doesn't matter if the system is fair. If it's not fair, if the system is unfair, then what means what it means is that you have to make more of a sacrifice, and you yep. may not be willing to make the sacrifice. Yeah, I learned it. so something I started noticing. It's like it's like well, I thought I wanted some stuff like maybe like to be a TV writer or whatever like. I had this in, I had this imaginary desire yeah. of like to be great and to be great means to be a writer on a show and to make it in specials and blah, blah, blah. Like that's what all the great guys do. So that's what I have to be doing to be great. The problem is just like your room, right? Like I, I thought I wanted to decorate, like I wanted a nice room more than I wanted anything in particular in my room. Like I just wanted the idea of something. So this isn't anything you can really achieve. So I started noticing about myself, like, well, what do I do? Like, as I do do things, so what do I do? I go to Mike's and I notice like, why do I go to Mike's? Like, if I, like on just on just like a you know an autopilot, it's like that's something I must do every day. Like, you know, some people play the guitar every day. I go to a mic. I, it's like it's like I'm hurt. It's like without thinking about it, I'll do that. And I learned by observing. It's like, oh, I don't just like doing the mic. The reason I like doing the mics is because I like seeing all of these particular people and. I like that feeling that you get when they look at you and you do a thing and like you get to talk to them later. It's like ego stuff. It's kind of ego stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. Or you like the so, camaraderie, just the, camaraderie. the conversation. 
Yeah, but also, it, yeah, but so here's the thing. Now, these things are things, but they are not comedy things. Like, so my thing now is like, okay, uh, I don't necessarily want to be on the road right now. Like, in my head, I don't see my life going that way in this particular moment. But if it was, I guess it would have to be because I would have such a love for comedy. And I felt like, because why do the people that do the things that they do it do them? Like, why does Louis make specials? Like, I guess they just do it not because they want from it, anything from the world, but because they just like comedy so much. Like, well, and they do. I mean, I think they, I think they do love it. But I think what also comes into play, I, I, I'm reading this, uh, this book. Uh, I forget the guy, the the author, but the name of the book is called Atomic Habits. And and what they what basically say is that we are all everything that we do is habitual. It's it's really not random. We've learned to to and and we've done this um, because so so for instance, if you have a desire, right? There's only three base. There's a few basic desires, which is food, food and water, shelter, right? And some level of companionship on a base level. Now, if yeah. you if you smoke, say for say if you smoke and you you go I, I smoke, why do you smoke? Cuz it relaxes my nerves, right? So what you're what you're really saying is I'm not able to to have the the satisfaction or the happiness of life because I'm under stress, so I'll I'll smoke. But uh-huh. what what you basically done is say by me inhaling smoke, it relaxes me. And because I'm relaxed, then I'm able to satisfy those primal needs in the first place. But the 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 thing that we use to 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 soothe that, the pacifier of that is is something that we've linked together arbitrarily where we've created a habit where we're literally like trained dogs we're putting there's certain things in the, in the in the those habits as well right like, the, the, the sa- the, we've attached those things it's the same way that happens in a negative way if you're a kid and you get attacked by a dog at three i know a guy like my nephew is so scared of dogs if a if a yorkshire terrier gets let out he ju- literally will jump on the couch it's not a rational understanding. It, what it is is it's it's he he's triggered by it. So we yeah. we're constantly putting these connecting these these arbitrary stimulus to something that we perceive as a real need, right? Like if you want, if you go, oh, I want, I got a desire for for uh, tacos, or what you really are saying is I have I'm hungry, so I want to eat. But why? Why is it tacos? Because to satisfy the need for hunger is just sustenance. But it's not just we make it about something specific because we create an arbitrary value on that thing to satisfy what on a base level that we've learned to satisfy. And we we have it's this is connected to that. That is connected to this. And sometimes somehow in your in your mind, it could literally be that. When you first had tacos, you had it with a bunch of friends and you because you 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 emotionally connect tacos to the camaraderie of being with friends. So you have a situation where you go, yo, I'm hungry. And then you satisfy it with something that doesn't really satisfy the real desire. You're satisfying with tacos specifically because specifically tacos is camaraderie and and these and this this happens in your head in such a quick fat you're not even aware of it and yeah. so certain things validate you and certain things don't and it's so arbitrary how we connect it together simply because it's what so you know you first you first get your feelings hurt and 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 the chick has red hair and now all of a sudden when you see red hair you, it, you you're trick i mean this is this is the trauma that we're under the trauma of the fact that we don't feel safe that goes yeah. so deeper. And so when you're talking about comedy, you're looking at other people and all of a sudden it becomes about what somebody else is doing because they look satisfied. So if I did that, I would be satisfied. And, and you don't even understand that this thought process is happening. It's it's all subconscious. 
And then you're unhappy when the reality is like what you're saying is you love doing comedy. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's an open mic or if it's not an open mic, you still love doing it, whatever yeah. that is. But even what that becomes a ha habitual. Say again. Well, I was going to say it just connects to the arbitrary thing. You know, it's, I was going to say, like, like, she's not my friend on Facebook, this girl, you know, and it, like, really upsets me. And I noticed, because I was like, dude, there's not, and there are people who I am friends with who I'm also not friends with on Facebook, but I don't give a shit. Like, right. to me, that doesn't mean anything. But, right. Like, her, her, in my, well, to me, I'm like, it means everything. And I'm like, Okay, well, that's something crazy. Just to say to the arbitrary thing, uh, what were you gonna say, Harry? I, I heard you. No, my something. my point is, I think we talked a little bit about that when we were having that discussion, where you're going through your thing on the street. Uh, and yeah. by the way, got, uh, shout out to my girl who waited patiently in the car for two hours. Two hours, man. God I'm bless. That's why I'm I sorry, everybody. Because all I had to do was no. She's fine with it. She's a wonderful human being. She gets it that uh, I I needed to help somebody, and she, you know I just texted her, and she said, "Don't even worry about it." But um. You all these things that are going great, you can see them now. It's tough when you were going through that breakup because the value was fully in on that. None of the other stuff that you're doing so well and that is going well for you matter to you in that moment because you had lost her. And in your mind, that was the only thing that mattered. So they're on two levels. One, you don't appre when we go through these things, we don't appreciate what we actually have. And then on the other hand, we also put this person who is, in theory, a random person because... <laughs> The world is random. It's just two people that, that have connected. And we put them on a pedestal and go, man, they are amazing. I'll never have another. What are the odds that you ran into the most perfect person in the world at this age, at this time, and that there's nobody else in the world? But our mind, we trick ourselves into feeling that way and putting them on a pedestal and how amazing. And what I tried to do at the time, and it wasn't successful at the moment, was to go, look, when you break this down, here are the flaws. And it doesn't mean they're a bad person, but here yeah. are the flaws. And, of what and it might. With. They, they might, might be horrible people too. They They're not. She's not. She's not. She's not. But even if she's not, it doesn't mean that she is perfect and that it is whatever. But we put them on. No, her. she's all. She's also a crazy bitch. But <laughs> you know, she's not a bad person. <laughs> but she's fucking insane, dude. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> there you go. And that's coming. You think I'm going through an accident, guys? I'm telling you, dude. She's a fucking nut, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like this camera angle. If you're and, not watching and, on the YouTube, mean, definitely. I mean, it is. It uh, looks like you're doing a uh, dude, an audition for the Joker, like just oh, like a camera. No, don't say that. I, <laughs> no, 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 I'm just playing around. Crazy. I'm playing look around. This, look at this whiteboard. You know what it says? It says you can do it. You are pushing people away. You can change. What you're doing <laughs> is working. Keep it up. People do think about you. It literally says all those things. Okay, wait. The one that's concerning is the you can push people away. No, I'm saying you are pushing people away, but you He's can taking change. note of his sabotage in his Oh, role. okay. You're trying to be better. Okay. Trying to so be better. I, let's I let's take that one and change it a little because that's the only negative one is you're pushing people away. I, I know. That's the one th it's, it's the one thing that's still happening that I have. Figure that out you, you feel like you're pushing people away. All right. So the good yeah. thing, though, is that you're aware of these things and you are working at it, right? You are working at this and you're not perfect at it. But that's that's beautiful because none of us are. And by acknowledging that, I think that's an amazing thing. It's a little negative, but we'll get to it. We'll fix it. It's negative, but it's got to be but fixed. I guess it's a right. not to do anymore sort of thing. Like stop pushing people away. Right. That's but, what he's well, it's, yeah. it's stuff I, yeah. It's something I wrote down when I was like, in a meditation process, like, Good, though. I would, yeah, I like would have to, I would try to think about the thing I'm trying to communicate to myself. Like, dude, I listen to this song every day. Yeah. And like, the and I'm listening, and the thing I imagine when I hear it, it's like this guy that's like kind of making a, a big realization about himself and like coming back to himself and like being awesome and like kind of like, it's like this movie moment. Mm. And I and it's like, well, I think I'm imagining that because I'm trying to manifest the moment like that for myself. Which is sad. Which I mean not sad. It's like it's like, dude, you know what I learned about myself recently? I was at I was at the day job and I, I, I have a serving day job and I have like little drawings in my my little uh, thing, you know? Yeah. That I just keep I just keep them to myself and I like it. And and somebody I left my thing at work and then the some part the person that uh, found it, she's like, Hey, uh, I think you left this. She's like, I really like your drawings. And then she like quoted one of the things I drew. And I got so shy. And I was like, 
And I, it, was, it was the first time I noticed about myself. I'm like, wow, like, I don't feel comfortable with people seeing my drawings. Like, it's, it's something that's so hard for me. So that means that's something I want to work on because I do see myself being a guy. You need, to, you need to have that on the whiteboard. Yeah. Gotta, I go put that on there. Go right on right now. Right. Look, Why not? Look, see, We're right not here, I got, look at that. I got my drawings right here from like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it, looks like a, it looks like a serial killer did it. Like, it, it, you know, it does. Doodles, I'm not going to yeah. lie, Dean. It, it does. Maybe not all. Maybe we don't want to attack them onto the wall using thumbtacks, I think is. <laughs> no, it's tape. I tape it. They're oh, really tape. clever. They're really clever and cute. Cool. They are cute. Um, Got a bunch of cool. I used to draw. But you're, but, but all right. So it. you're aware of this thing, right? And you are working on it, which is great, I think. I think it's amazing. You go, okay. I don't want to be this anymore. The, you don't realize how long it takes some people. And that's another thing I think I told you is that. It takes people years to figure that out, and some people never figure it out. So to want to improve but, yourself is like an amazing thing that know, you don't give yourself big. enough credit for, you know, or you didn't at the also, time. It's gotta, it's gotta be one of the things. You, it has to be in order to break the habit. It has to be easy, because yeah. So when, when you have a real, you have a bad breakup, or you have something that then you're motivated to change, but once things are not that bad then we don't maintain the mo the motivation is not there and then the, so the, the change has to be easy so for instance if you if you go listen i'm gonna wake up every day and i'm gonna do one push-up a day right and you do that for 40 40 days Getting up yeah. and doing one push up a day is yeah, what does it cause? I'm, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And even if you go to skip it and it's you miss it in the morning, you can make it up because it's it's so effortless. Um, and then because it's effortless, we create a we create a, a habit, and then the habit becomes easier to escalate because it's already a habit. So if you're doing one push up, you could do five, right? And you you can literally build up, but it's because doing is what changes your mind. Doing is what changes the habit. Talking about doing, yeah. I mean, whiteboard is a great thing to keep to take stock, but ultimately, if there's no real action behind that, then mm. it, it, this is why it's so easy to scroll on Instagram mm. for hours and hours and hours. It's so easy. <laughs> It's it's yeah. they've made it so easy for you to to steal your time because all literally this is the extent of the uh, the, the this is the commitment yeah, you need. Yeah. To to just look at thousands of pictures and stimulus. It's it's this. This is all it takes is that you're just scrolling. Yeah. So I got into such a bad habit with that. I go, I'm I don't even know if I'm paying attention as I scroll. <laughs> at one point I was like so deep in. I'm like. What what the fuck am I doing? I'm not even. Because it's uh, what so am I looking habitual. For? Yeah. What am I looking for? What am I? Yeah. It becomes dangerous. It becomes. Yeah. It becomes. But what? But but instead of it's instead of looking at it as dangerous, look how can you how can you create that? Same. This with this book. It is. I mean, if you get a chance, you just call Atomic Habits, an amazing book. I haven't quoted a good book where it was like really life changing. One of the most amazing, I mean, it just, it literally teaches you how to program, how to program yourself. And what's, what's interesting. It was, it's the same technique that I use when I have a guy, when I train a dude and I have him lay the five bricks because the task is easy. I make the task easy. There's not a, it's, 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 there's a sense of accomplishments. It's not hard to do. And I'm not asking you to do something where you have to lose. And then sit, but because it's easy to get you, you can, you can be more comfortable with it. So it's just, you know, motivation and inspiration is way overrated. Consistency is way more important than, than motivation and aspirations because you have to, that takes energy. And, there, and, and because it takes energy, it's hard. It's less consistent, you yeah. know? The changes I've been making, dude, are like, I love them. Like, at, at first it was for her, you know? At yeah. first, it like, at first I would post things on IG and with the intention that she would see, oh, look how funny I am, come back to me. But because I was starting to see my own life through the lens of somebody yeah. who's trying to be impressive, 
I started then seeing all the things wrong with me. I was like, like yeah, I'm but it's also impressive. making the attempt to be impressive is what yeah. makes you impressive. Like you, you can't. Well, it, well, you don't. You you don't get better. You don't get better by. You got to do it, and you have to do it with a level of frequency. The it's not even. You know, I think what did they say? It's thirty days to create a habit, but it's really not thirty days. I heard it's, it was three times. It's. Uh, well, I, I don't. I definitely don't think that if it was three times, uh, you start I, to create a habit. Yeah, well, it becomes nah, easier to do. It's, it's long a habit. Did you want to hear the gayest thing about me? Is I mean, how can I the... say no at this point, <laughs> <laughs> dude? It's the gayest thing about me hmm. because that uh, gay is in like men will call me gay from afar because it's so gay. That uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that um, I've been working on. That like I used to I used to like stay at her house and then like when I wake up with her in the morning she would like clean her stove and stuff like she'd clean her stove and like start like cleaning around the house like I guess I was like her habits and uh, I have been cleaning my stove every Monday in like mm -hmm. memory of that I don't know why around. that's yeah, I mean I, I mean how that what's, it's like, what, what's really hard what's not gay but it's horrible that you got food caked on your stove yeah yeah that's that well I live with three dudes dude I'm the cleanest guy here you have oh, no that's idea a problem yeah, uh, yeah that's but the it, cleanest guy it's 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 really you know like you start to you know it this is this is the thing I mean it took me a long time to get Harry to use a tailor yeah right to, to yeah. tailor his clothes. Yeah was like I don't this but once once you get a pair you buy a pair of pants and even it doesn't have to be really expensive and you have them tailored. No, I go to Marshall's bro. You cannot not have them tailored. I will tailor a pair of fifteen dollar pants. I don't I mean and fuck. then and now there were there were a hundred dollar pair of pants. Do I like tailoring? Tailoring is I had to bro. I need to look the best bro. I don't have enough I don't have enough confidence to not look open oh, like a little weird, you know, it's got to all be perfect. But you think that, yeah, I mean, but that's also a value that you put on what that is. It's that's true. You know, other people's perspective of you. Are you happy with yourself? I wasn't happy with myself, but I had I didn't I guess I didn't think I deserved it. I also came from a very negative place that I assumed everything that costs money was uh out out that's not for me but that came from an immigrant family right and so i didn't even bother looking at how much it would cost a tailor like i didn't even examine that it was not that expensive like and it it really was worth it but i was just yeah. so negative that i stopped i i cut myself off before i even allowed myself to think about the possibility that i, I was worthy and that i deserve some like to be better or sp what i considered special treatment but it's just regular stuff you know, yeah, you have to get past yeah that. I think you you start to care about yourself. Yeah, you start to care about yourself, and then you do things with a level of frequency. And and I don't mean talk about doing it, but you actually do things with a level of frequency that that starts to make you go, okay, uh, I I like you start to like it. Like the, the the it becomes good to you. It becomes oh wow, this is this is cool for me. Plus, it becomes habitual. It becomes habitual. I, I, I mean, I, I. It's a weird thing. It's like I'm. Um, I have one of my. I had a, a bad accident on one of my feet, and one of my feet swole up. Right, and I'm so accustomed to having. By accident, shoot. do you mean kicking somebody in the dick? It, I might have kicked somebody in the dick. <laughs> and your feet swelled up. Somebody was being. <laughs> oh, an you. Oh, you missed the smoke Saturday too. Uh, I Friday. Did. I left. I had to go. I had another spot. What happened? You Friday? missed the smoke, kid. Oh fuck! What happened? Man. Go at down Stan again. At Stan New York. Yeah, you left too. You left early too, right? Yeah, we were both on yeah. early. I mean, we were both on. I think Dean went first. I went third or whatever on that show Friday. Great set, yeah. by the way. Dean's very funny. If you haven't, Thanks. look, I went in. Uh, I'm on stage, and I'm and I'm I've been working on a lot of long form like storytelling stuff, mm. and uh, and I. And I was just, I, I was talking about as when I was a kid, how there was no, the, you know, the joke is about how there was no classification of, of, of autism or whatever, whatever, that it was just, they stuck everybody. They would, they, the, nobody was diagnosed. They just stuck the people that were meant, had mental problems. They just stuck them all in one class. 
So you had emotionally disturbed kids with kids who have physical disabilities, who fire who, starters, spinal bifida. This, you know, just so you you be you you'd have a kid who's a, in a wheelchair, but now he knows how to hotwire a car because he hangs out with a roughneck kid who has a, who's emotionally disturbed. So um, and uh, I was talking about this, and I I just mentioned autism and this, this drunk dude walks up to the he comes walks up to the hey you autism russian dude steps to the stage and i and you know he comes at the stage aggressively right and um and i'm like i, I like you you better sit down you better sit down and he's like, you don't do it. I go, man, I don't give a F. You better, I tell you what you better do is you better sit down. I'm going to hurt you. I said, because if you come up here, I'm going to hurt you. And the dude is like, blah, 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 blah. and I go, all right, well, I stopped the show as I've been known to do <laughs> and go, yo, we could, we could get this popping. Dante because- doesn't believe in the show must go on. Dante <laughs> believes in the. We got to stop this show, and I will get back to the show as, do, as soon as I'm done whipping somebody's ass. But Dante is not a show. Let's, let's be on. honest, Harry. Isn't that the show? Is, isn't Listen, that real? What are you going to watch? More people tell jokes? That, that happened all night. That happened all that was That had been going on for two hours already. You get some. You get a comedy show and mixed martial arts when you they, uh, they hire definitely Dante got. They definitely, they already got the, fun, the funny. Dean and Harry had already gone up. Yeah. They, they had fun. So yeah. let's spice it up with an ass whipping, right? Yeah. So what happened? <laughs> who, who was it? Like, what happened? Like, this dude just, he comes up and he was drunk and he he goes, my kids are autistic. Oh, he's one of those guys. So I'm like, uh, you know, and, and I'm, 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 look, I'm not, tr- first of all, I wasn't making a joke about autism. I was just saying when I was a kid, they didn't have these classifications. They just which which I'm actually you're going, criticizing this is, the societal yeah, issue because yeah. we, we didn't have that because we just we just they just don't arts. understand our art guys they yeah. just don't understand well he understood my heart <laughs> he he understood the all art, of my and I, so I go of, no. uh, the art of the <laughs> kick what, I just I don't <laughs> care but I go and no first of all I don't I didn't write this joke with your goofy ass kids in mind I don't know your kids so he. <laughs> He goes, well, you, I go, I tell you what, you better sit down. That's what you better. So he sits down with the beer and uh, he says something. We're going back and forth. And so they like, I'm because here's the thing, D. Anytime I have a problem, we got to do. I have an eraser board also. Mm-hmm. But mine uh-huh. is there have been no incidents in 12 days. <laughs> No. no incidents of physical violence in 12, in 12 days, days and i count it up and every time i have something like this i gotta erase it and start it back at zero so and and i'm and i'm saying man i'm really trying i'm 56 i'm i'm trying not to I'm, i don't want no more stories like this will be a story like if you come out friday you could you could go yo what happened after i left and there'll be another story and i just feel like at 56 I shouldn't have no. I, there should be no stories about me. Dante, do you ever wonder if maybe it's you? I, I um, no, it wasn't me. I it was. It wasn't you. No, it wasn't no. Dante. Dude, I can I already know hear you. Dante. You know, what's scary, like dude. Isn't it scary? I am sincerely afraid of people like that because that guy. Like, think about it. Like not like he heckled the show. Like he, he ruins. He gets. He interrupts the show because he thinks it's about him. And that's just how he's acting in that moment. But that means in his existence, he like thinks so much is about like, like the fact that he really thought like he was important enough for the joke to be about him, and like that he interrupted the show. I've been doing comedy, comedy twenty two years, and I wrote a joke about his autistic kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and so like, but dude, I talk like I feel like I see that in people all the time, and it really frightens me because I'm like. Who am I talking to? Like these people are. Well, insane. look, the reality is we get up there every night, right? And what we're doing is talking to a random group of strangers. So statistically, at some point, you're going to run into somebody who's not mentally well. Because if you keep shuffling through 50 to 100 people at a time every night, not every one see, of them is going to be well. Do you ever see like people who are living in the situation that you used to be in? You ever like 
Have yeah, you, like Dean. What are you talking about? When I was talking to you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. I but, went through that. Right. But I mean, like, even like, like, I started seeing, like, I guess comics that are newer than I am, but I was like looking at them and how they operate, like how they exist amongst each other. And like, they're all cool buddies and stuff. And I was like, oh, man, like, I'm not, I'm not here at this show with like all my buddies. Like to me, this is like I'm here doing my job. Like it's like, yeah, I but they're you. not. They're also not real comics either, right? Maybe not so. Yeah, they, they you, like you know when you start out, well, you, you see go, everyone go through phases. You know, you're a senior now or whatever. You're a junior now, and you see what uh, the freshmen come in, and you remember what it was like when you were a freshman and all the same dumb shit that you did. But I see. I, but sometimes, but sometimes they're not funny. Sometimes. Sometimes I see, I feel like sometimes I'm seeing people who are only speaking to each other because they are around each other and they don't even well, that's, know. That's 90% of people in general. Sure. But that's sad because that means that but sometimes they don't even know that they're alone. Like they don't know that they're alone. Yeah, but you, you, what, you're, what you're really saying, and you're talking about this in, in, in terms of comedy, but I, I, if you think about how many people do you know that's really sincere, that's really honest, and really, there's 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 no light between who they say they are and who they really are. So it's it's a funny thing, because Harry, because you said, do uh, you think it's you? It's something that I really thought about. But what I also I was being realized, facetious. it is you because you're the one who will uh, address it, and other people don't. Every right, and and and, and so in that sense, so, it's you. But yeah, it's it, not because it's your fault. It is you are you will not you will take up for everybody else because you can and you do take up for everybody else and make sure that this person doesn't ruin the show or get disruptive. I also believe that it's so disrespectful. Like Completely. what this guy is doing is he's being a bully. He, he he's he's going this is he has created this scenario that it's all about him. Um, He's disrupting because he doesn't care about anybody else in well, the room. Well, this goes to your, what you talk about where assholes are not afraid to make other people uncomfortable. Yeah, and they don't care. And then we're always, everybody else, they leave everybody else to kind of fit in the cracks and toe, tiptoe around them. Like, you, you I'm just not going to do that. And I'm, but I was thinking about this. It's funny you say that. I was like, mm. what is it about them that they think they could do it to me. Like, I'm the last guy that's going to let you do it. Like, why not pick somebody else? But, but, and I thought about this, that they're so accustomed to nobody having, like, nobody has any credibility. People don't have, and it's not just because they don't have credibility. Sometimes they're afraid to have the credit. They don't, they're not willing to, to put themselves at risk. And I, what's important to me is my my credibility because I mean you got to know Harry when the guy said autism. The I once I knew that the guy was offended. I said, "Dog, I don't." I'm sure you I had a conversation. With I him said, "I don't know your kids." Yeah, I didn't write this joke with your kids in mind. I don't know you. He didn't care, and he, he was like, "You tell me you covered right." Oh boy. And I'm like. <laughs> Dog, iron what is Who was there? So you guys, yeah, it was the Iron Sheik. He said, "I break your back and make you humble," and uh, I. But it was like going back and forth, going back and forth, and then, then there's the moment where I'm being kind, I'm being empathetic, and that's not good enough. So now you want to get your pound of flesh too. I'm, 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 I'm telling you that. In those, I, I'm, I don't know your kids. I'm not. This joke is not about you. First of all, I wasn't even talking about autistic kids, right? I was just talking about the whole. Didn't matter. He's triggered. He jumps up, and now what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to. I I, I apologized. Do you do you talk about autistic kids because you have a desire to, or because it to you is like a way to get through something? Say that again. Like you talk about. Like, does your joke come from, like, that you want to talk about them? Or does the joke come from some cathartic thing you're going through internally? The, the, that the joke comes from something that I care about. It was, yeah. it was just a comparison of time that here is a situation where 
we are so much more empathetic about what people's situations. But when I was coming up, that wasn't a that just wasn't a thing. It was normal or you were basically retarded. That's what everybody you were normal or retarded. There wasn't even a classification of different kinds of of special ed. They just stuck. So that, that's what I was talking about. So it was just to think about how far we've come in terms of the classification of it but how difficult it was at the time is just what I'm talking about. But I, I think I have to go. Um, I, I, I'm still kind of, you know what? Let's do this behind the paywall because it's. I want to reveal some stuff that I'm that I, that I was thinking On the about. Patreon, patreon.com yeah. slash manschool202. That's where we're doing the uh, bonus show with uh, Dean over here. We'll get into more of, more of Dante's ass kicking stories and how he hurt his foot <laughs> whipping somebody's ass. <laughs> Not as the only guy. Listen, I got a foot injury, Doc. <laughs> like, oh, is he, you know, kicking is he somebody plantar, in the is dick? Is it plantar fasciitis? <laughs> I mean, I did kick somebody with the heel. His of my name shoe. was fasciitis, yeah. so whatever. He was a Greek guy. What do you want to? Um, you want to plug something? Plug yeah, the social plug media your stuff, man. Me? Okay. Yes. So. I am the co-producer of a comedy show, the Aggressive Night Show. We run it every Tuesday. Bushwick at Old Town. Check us out on Instagram, Wrestling Show Company. No shows this December. We're taking a break. Nobody appreciates us. Just joking. We, we need a break. So we're going to come back in January. Aggressive Show. Yeah. And my Instagram is DeanDavid95. Check out my reels on the journey of betterment. All right. Harry, real quick. Uh, all my stuff is on social media at Harry Terjani, and I'm doing stuff on TikTok, and it's uh, going well. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Uh, also, I do relationship consultations as well. Uh, you can see how I turned Dean's life around with one single two-hour <laughs> consultation. Um, oh, yeah. uh, if you want a consultation, email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com, and we can set up the uh, rates and stuff and the uh, calls. And if you want to get me, y'all know how to get me. It's DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Um, GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. We are out. Check us on the other side. Peace.